I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Audi SQ five without launch control, brake boost. Decent. Horsepower and torque. If you're watching this video and by this point you haven't subscribed, now's the time to subscribe. So right now, subscribe and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Subscribe. 349 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque from a turbo 3-liter V6. First thing I noticed were those grr, grr upshifts. Those were really nice because we do have a ZF 8-speed auto. And they came out of real exhaust tips. Yes, because we have this special exhaust on this car. And if you don't get that, you get these really fake-looking, fake-fake, super-fake-looking exhaust tips. The SQ5 has been notorious in the car industry for having the worst fake exhaust in the previous generation. Everyone is up in arms, including myself. I believe I was one of the first people to notice that. I think it was the first car that had the worst exhaust tips too. So they actually did improve the fakeness on the regular Q5, which I saw on an Auto Gafool video. They actually just deepened it instead of making it flat. But the SQ5 without this exhaust package is like even worse, worse fake. But I'm glad that we have this exhaust because it's very real and it does sound pretty damn good. Let's take a listen to the outside. And you can actually hear that on the inside too, which is nice. I wouldn't expect that out of most cars. Yeah, exactly. Like this is a very good car that's actually like kind of quick. So let's send it into Cliche Corner using my paddles, which are kind of cheap and plasticky as we know in Audis. And it does want to understeer, but it is also very wet outside. So I'm not sending this too hard. And we also don't have the optional sport differential, which would probably make a difference, but this thing does rip. Like it's got a pretty decent amount of power, a little bit less than like a comparable GLC 43. Yeah, but like most Audis are kind of understeery through Cliche Corner. They really are. Unless you're in an R8. Yeah, exactly. Or an RSQ8, in which case it's just perfect through there like the RS5 was too. Yes, because that's kind of just the Lamborghini-ish. But overall handling wise for an SUV, this does feel really good. It's also really comfortable, even though we don't have the optional air suspension. I really don't think you need it. Like you just leave this thing in comfort and you're good to go. Yeah, Audis, they're, they're pretty comfortable. And this engine is really responsive, so I'm just going to floor it. Pretty quick to downshift and it does sound good in the upper rpms yeah drivetrain top notch yes and it is quattro all-wheel drive so that's why you get the little bit of understeeriness but people that don't care about handling want this thing to just drive well in the winter you're gonna love this i don't think anyone really buys this for the handling i think they just buy it because they like audi suvs and don't want to do bmw or mercedes yeah and they probably just want to go faster in a straight line not faster than both of those because i believe this is slightly slower they're paying for that little red slice of paint next to the badge <laughs> pretty much and the extra good looks we should probably get into the looks okay starting with the front end we've got a big audi grill but the whole bottom part is fake, which is kind of expected out of a non RS model. Yeah, and it doesn't look too bad, but you definitely notice it. Then the headlights are really cool. It's just like another interesting way for them to design headlights. And I have no issues with it, but I'm also not in love with the looks of this at all. Yeah, they are very different. They're trying to do something new with the headlights, which I appreciate. Side view, we've got a very, very crisp body line. It's reminiscent of the RS5 that we drove a couple years ago. Yeah, and we have some pretty decent looking wheels and we have the optional red calipers. Yeah, they say sport on them. I really like these wheels, but what would be the Continental recommended tire for an SQ5? The Sport Contact 6. And one thing with the outside that kind of bothers me is Audi door handles always kind of like open up a weird way. I noticed that. Back. Yeah. And I don't like it. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. But I'm also not planning on buying an Audi anytime soon, so don't <laughs> listen to me. Listen to your customers. Well, I mean, everyone listens to us about their cars, so. Not they, the manufacturers, just the, the customers well, listen the, to us. We're hoping the manufacturers eventually listen the to us. The customers listen to us. The manufacturers listen to the customers. And if any engineers want to tell me what I said wrong or right, hit me up on LinkedIn, you're a technician, but leave a message. Tell me what you do in the automotive industry. And moving around to the back, it looks pretty decent. I think the coolest part is the taillights and obviously the real exhaust, but most of the taillights. Yeah, and they're sequential. Which I thought was a problem in North America because I believe all the other Audis didn't have the one sequential taillight. They had to have like one part always illuminated, but these are full sequential and they look really good. But they don't connect all the way across like the Q8 would, so it's like, eh, not the best. And then ending with the exhaustives at the bottom, these are really nice. Yes, they are. Even though we talked about it already. <laughs> so overall, 
looks wise, kind of meh. Yeah, it's it's good looking. It's not extra good looking. It's not bad looking. Doesn't do it for me compared to all the competition. Yeah, because we've already driven the BMW X3 M40i and we've also driven the GLC 43. We've also driven the Porsche Macan. This would be comparable to the S. And then we've also driven the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, the regular, not the Quadrifoglio, even though we also drove that one. And the Jaguar F-Pace, which we only drove the SVR, not comparable to this one. So probably my turn to drive? Yeah, right now. Hey, nice limited edition shirt on Teespring. Oh, thank you, Yuri. They'll Your, be gone. pretty good too. They'll be gone by the end of the year, so get them Super quick. Super limited. Okay, Yuri, launch it. That is satisfying. But it automatically upshifted for me if I had missed it. Obviously. What nah, do you expect? I don't know. Maybe bang off the limiter like that LC500. Name an SUV that doesn't automatically upshift. The Jeep Trackhawk. Are you sure? Remember, because we, we kept missing it. And it yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> Got me. <laughs> but this can do 0 to 100 in about five seconds, which is definitely slower than a GLC 43. So now moving on to the interior. It's a nice, normal Audi interior, dark colors, nothing fancy. We've got cool carbon fiber, but somebody hit control T and turned it 90 degrees. Yeah, the carbon fiber has been turned rather than being horizontal, it's vertical. What? Yeah, mind blown, dude. I, I haven't even seen that before. So it actually is pretty crazy. And this is an option, so it does look kind of cool. Yeah, we got a little bit of red light underneath there. Piano black because Audi likes that. Yeah, that's all around the shifter. It's going to get scratched and dirty. And this has the screen that's a kind of like tacked on, which seems like old Audi with the rotary wheel, but there's no rotary wheel. This is actually the new style Audi infotainment and everything, and it works pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, so they made it look like the previous gen, but it's all the new stuff. It works exactly the same as all the new stuff, but new for this one is we've got a dynamic mode for the gauge cluster instead of sport or S performance. Yeah, dynamic's very weird. It kind of looks like you've got like two Dragon Ball Z eyebrows brows like spreading out like when I did that launch I barely even knew where to shift I'm like what is this tack but you get used to it it looks cool I don't know if I'd I care for that just stick to the bubbles yeah I'm pretty sure there's a picture on the internet that I've seen that has eyes like that which I don't know if I put in this video then you'll know but if not then it looks like this weird cat eye thing and as for drive modes we have off-road comfort auto dynamic and individual definitely just leave this thing in comfort and then as for technology it does have radar cruise and lane keep it works pretty well but I found in my own use that even my hand was on the wheel, it would tell me to put my hand on the wheel. Like you need to put a little more pressure on your hand than I would expect. Yeah, if you're going like on straight, like 401 type roads, it definitely does that. But if you're going through like a little bit of turns, I find it really good. And that's why I kind of like the Maserati and Alfa Romeo system a little bit more because that pretty much just needed to feel that something was touching the wheel. Yeah, that system's really good. Even though it was unusable in the right lane. <laughs> and what I really like about Audis is that the blind spot monitoring is attached to the side view mirrors. So when it flashes, it's really bright. It forces you to look at that mirror and see what's actually there. Oh, how about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay? We definitely have Apple CarPlay, which we can both show with our iPhone. And we also have Android Auto, apparently. But we can't test it because Jacob's an iPhoneer. What's up, iSheep? Yo, look how good these photos are now that Jacob's been taking with his phone. Oh, best photos, man. This is the best camera, even though it lost out on the MKBHD camera thing. But nah, this is still good. I really like that photo of your dog in front of the Lamborghini, but everyone kept like putting rocket emojis. Like, I don't, I don't know why. I put a lipstick one because I get what they were talking about. It was my dog's dick. And then we also have 360 cameras in here, which are very high res, really good system. Yeah, if you want a deep dive, just watch our other Audi videos. It's all the same. And now for our usual tests, the visor test. Ooh. Three, two, one. Oom! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Volkswagen Group, what up? <laughs> put it back, put it back. Yeah. <laughs> well, full pass again. Is this their second, third? Second uh, Audi. Second Audi, third, third Volkswagen, Volkswagen Group because of GTI. Wow. <laughs> okay, and then as for cup holders, I don't think we can fit a small cup, but we only have a medium right now, and that'll just barely fit. But what sucks is if I use my armrest, tilt it up and move it forward, then I can't get my cup out. So you just gotta tilt it back. But there's this little spot right here where I can put a cup, but it's like a little 
change tray. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yo, and then the spot in front of it too. Like, what are you going to put in either of these two spots? Car manufacturers, don't put cup holders under armrests. Put it in front of shifters, please. But back to the actual cup holders, they are heated and cooled, which is really nice. And then above that, we have a wireless charging tray, which is an option and can be moved, which is cool. Then we also have this little slot for a cell phone right here, which fits my 12 Pro just fine. Does not fit my 12 Pro Max at all. And then how about these seats? Very, very comfortable. These are the sport seats. Yeah, I, I think I always like Audi seats. Audi seats are very good. How about back seat room? For me at five foot eight and a half ish, perfectly fine, lots of room. And at six foot one and a half, not so good. I was actually surprised at how little leg room I had. But we have a nice sunroof that we can see from back there and it's an SUV, so we should probably do the box test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. Sorry we couldn't fit these boxes into the trunk this time. However, welcome to Saxman JF, his box, and k and box, 10 and 11. Get your own box on patreon.com slash the straight pipes. So I feel like that's pretty much it with this SUV. Let's get to the price. It starts at a reasonable $64,500. Canadian. With a couple boxes ticked, this one is $73,840. Is this the SUV for you if you're looking for something between all the luxury brands? If I was looking for comfort, then yes. But if I was looking for more sportiness, I would definitely go with the GLC 40. <laughs> I agree, but the fact that this will go grr, grr on the upshifts with the sport exhaust and for how comfortable this is, I think this is a very good compromise all around. Give me one last grr, grr. That's pretty satisfying. So let us know which SUV you'd pick if you were in this market. The Mercedes, the BMW, the Jag, the Alpha. Watch all of those videos of ours because we reviewed basically all of them. So click over here in this lovely little playlist or maybe just a bunch of videos that we're gonna put up anyways. Tick, 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 t